the wireless industry is in a race to roll out 5G service. Consumers will get the best service, and 5G will get them even better service than they have today. Telemedicine, driverless cars, and virtual reality. 100 times faster. Small cell sites that are much closer together. Outrage and alarm in some neighborhood as antennas go up around the home. 300,000 new antennas. Is there a catch? There is just a small one. It might kill you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Good, good. No wireless device, and 5G included, is safety tested before it's put on market. The closer you live to a cell tower, the higher your blood glucose. A lifetime study of lab animals confirmed the link between cell tower radiation and cancer. We're electromagnetic. Our cells are electromagnetic. The idea that these billions of waves per second passing through our body are not going to have an effect on us is true fantasy. They absolutely have an, an effect, effect, on effect on us. Can you hear me now? In November of 2018, a story hit the internet claiming hundreds of birds died in the Netherlands during a 5G cellular network experiment. Reported by the conspiracy blog Health Nut News, the story spread quickly amongst conspiracists looking for clicks. The original story came from John Cools, who runs several anti-5G conspiracy sites and social media groups. Cools somehow tried to connect the recent unexplained mass bird death at The Hague in the Netherlands to a test of the controversial new 5G technology. However, skeptic website Snopes contacted the proper authorities and found out that while a 5G test did take place in June of 2018, no such experiments were scheduled or occurred around the time of the mass bird death. Eventually, John Cools himself backed off the claim that such a test had actually occurred, so you can file this story under fake. Unfortunately, it is still going around, so if you see your uncle reposting it on Facebook, please do let him know it's not real. The effects of cell phone radiation are not yet fully known, and while many are raising actual rational concerns about potential health risks, fake stories like this one just create misinformation and end up working against the cause by muddling the real threats with fake ones made up by conspiracy nuts looking for affirmation and clicks. Similar sensationalist stories have popped up in the wake of 5G's planned rollout, saying the new technology will not only kill us all, but going as far as saying this is all intentional. This is one of many depopulation conspiracy theories. Believers of these think the government or the NWO or whoever fits their narrative at the time are worried about overpopulation and are planning a secret genocide. That's where things go from that's possible to that's ridiculous. Why would some group of global elitists flood the planet with harmful radiation when it would also affect them and their families? Are they all going to hide in their secret underground bunkers while they wait 20 years for the true effects of non-ionizing radiation on humans to finally show? Are they all going to stop using their phones, which will run on the same deadly 5G technology? While cell towers and cell phones themselves do give off a form of radiation, it is not technically considered the harmful type. The ICN-IRP, International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection, long ago determined what exposure levels are and aren't safe for humans, and the incoming 5G network is still within those set limits. However, many people question if those standards are outdated, as we're dealing with a technology that's constantly changing. On the story of the mass bird death, the chairman of the ICN-IRP, Dr. Eric Van Rongen, told Snopes that the levels of exposure would be comparable to those of the current networks, and thus very low, much lower than the exposure limits. The only way one could imagine death of birds as a result of exposure to electromagnetic fields is with very high level exposure that results in considerable heating, but the levels that are used by mobile telecom antennas are not strong enough for this to happen. There are maybe millions of such antennas around the world, and this has never been reported. Conspiracy theorists will likely tell you people like Dr. Van Rongen are paid shills spreading misinformation. But you can certainly trust scientists and researchers in most cases. At least you can look them up and check their credentials. Whereas the guys making those conspiracy Facebook groups are a lot less credible and likely just get their information from other conspiracy groups and websites. It's an ugly cycle of cognitive dissonance and confirmation bias. Don't take my word for it either. I'm just a video editor. I'm no scientist or health expert, but I always do my research and I always provide links in the description. I make these videos because we are living in an age of misinformation, and I want to encourage people to look at things critically. Don't automatically accept something because it fits your narrative while rejecting anything that doesn't without actually looking into it. How many people nowadays share a story on Facebook or Twitter based solely on the headline without even reading it? People even unironically retweet the Onion story so much there's a subreddit dedicated to it. Stay vigilant, people. Anyway, no, 5G technology isn't killing birds in mass. 
However, there actually is some potential that the flooding of these radio waves may be harmful to animals and plant life, but not in the sudden extinction kind of way. Unfortunately, any new technology humans invent has the potential to disturb the natural environment. And let us not forget that we as human beings are part of that environment. Well, that would mean those radio waves could potentially be harmful to us too. We don't yet know all the effects of cell phone radiation, and it may very well turn out to be more harmful than initially thought, but 5G isn't a weapon designed to melt our brains. One of the main concerns around cell phones and RF, radio frequency fields, is the possible link to cancer. In 2011, the World Health Organization classified cell phone radio frequency fields as a Class 2B carcinogen, meaning it is possibly carcinogenic to humans. Dylan Collins of Vox looked at five high-quality cohort studies where researchers looked at cell phone exposure through time. The research ultimately showed that while there is a small increased risk in non-cancerous tumors, there was no direct link to cancer. These studies are by no means definitive, but they tend to show that cell phones probably do not cause cancer in humans. A more recent study by the U.S. National Toxicology Program on the effects of RF energy on rats and mice did find an increase in malignant tumors, but the doses of radiation used were higher than those used in cell phones. The American Cancer Society points out that some aspects of this study make it hard to know just how well those results might be applied to cell phone use in people. Furthermore, they state that studies of people who may have been exposed to RF radiation at their jobs, such as people who work around or with radar equipment, those who serve as communication antenna and radio operators, have found no clear increase in cancer risk. Overall, there are some studies that show a possible cancer link, but most of them actually do not. While the cancer link hasn't really been proven, there are other causes for concern. There are four kinds of electromagnetic fields that we know are harmful to human health. So radio frequency radiation, magnetic fields, dirty electricity, and electric fields, okay? What is our exposure in a, in a day? It's not one cell phone. It's cell phones, it's multiple wireless networks, it's smart meters, it's cell towers. There is also evidence that cell phone radiation affects sperm levels in men, but we don't yet know what that means for fertility. It has also been shown that cell phone usage may lead to an increase in glucose levels in the brain. Unfortunately, it is also unclear how this might impact human health. Regardless, 5G is coming. Likely to hit sometime in 2020, the inevitable rollout of 5G networks promises faster than ever connections. 5G stands for fifth generation wireless and differs from 4G technology in that it operates on a much wider range of frequencies. 5G is even more promising because its larger bandwidth allows it to handle up to 1,000 devices per meter. That all sounds good, but lots of people consider this new technology to be very controversial due to the lack of research on the long-term effects that cell phone technology has on humans. So let's look at what exactly radiation is. Different types of radiation fall into two categories on the electromagnetic spectrum. There are harmless forms of non-ionizing radiation on one end and ionizing radiation on the other. The latter can cause cellular damage in humans and repeated DNA damage can cause cancer. That's why you have to wear that huge chest pad when you get an x-ray taken and should only have them done when absolutely necessary. Since cell phones give off non-ionizing radiation, they cannot damage our DNA. But as we've said, there may be other side effects of exposure to even this kind of radiation. The latest concerns raised say that the human sweat glands absorb the radiation created by 4G and 5G technology. Scientists worry we simply do not know yet enough about its effects and we're just ramping up the exposure. In order to operate at higher bandwidths, carriers will need more towers. They're calling them small cells, but they're really not that small, and these things will be everywhere. Very soon, carriers will be installing these on streetlights and posts in a city near you. This is a major part of the concern. Having these waves around us may not cause immediate problems, but we don't know the true long-term effects. With such an increase in the number of towers, we're just constantly surrounded by this invisible radiation now, day after day. The standards for radiation in the US were set in the 90s. Perhaps it's time regulators force the big telecoms to look closer at the effects of these constantly growing and evolving technologies. Maybe they need to pump the brakes a little bit, but when all you care about is money, that won't happen. Unfortunately, these companies can fight and lobby to get their way regardless of potential health risks. And with the guy who used to work for Verizon in charge of the FCC, it's a lot easier for these companies to get what they want with no real oversight or regulation. Most of the telecoms have displayed unethical policies in the past, so we can't just trust them to do the right thing. 
It's up to us as citizens to remain vigilant and hold politicians and corporations accountable. It's up to us to dismiss crazy conspiracies so we can focus on the real problems. It's no secret that governments and corporations use misinformation to mislead people. We cannot allow them to blatantly lie to the public and to continue to put profit over human lives. Just how dangerous is their technology? We don't know enough. They don't know enough. How much, how much, how much money has money the, the, the industry committed to supporting, to supporting additional, additional, additional independent research? I stress independent research. Is that independent research ongoing? Has any been completed? Where can consumers look for it? Um, and we're talking about research on the biological effects of this new technology. Thank you, Senator. I, I think, uh, thank you for your focus on the issue. Uh, safety is paramount, and as you alluded to, we rely on the expert agencies, we rely on the findings of the FDA and others as to the requirements to keep all of us safe. Uh, there are no industry back studies, to my knowledge right now.